If you think barbells win over dumbbells when it comes to building muscle mass, then today's video might just change your mind. This episode is brought to you by my friends at Chubby's Shorts. Their tagline is, the weekend has arrived. And I gotta be honest, it does always feel a little bit like a weekend when I'm wearing my favorite five and a half inch training shorts because they have the comfort of something that you can throw on and you just forget all about. With the built-in liner, I get zero tugging, zero chafing, and zero adjusting when I've got the four-way stretch that Chubby's has going on. They're super soft, but always supportive. And I like take these things through every single movement imaginable from cleans, Olympic lifts, squats, lunges, double unders, biking, and more. And let's not forget to mention that Chubby's come in the best color combos all with built-in compression liners. Make sure you visit chubbies.team forward slash Marcus Philly. You're gonna find your favorite new shorts in a variety of colors and inseam lengths. Again, I use the five and a half inch if you're looking to purchase what I've got. Make sure you use code Marcus15 to get your 15% off on your first purchase. Now we have to start with the question, does heavier really equal bigger and stronger? In the gym, People often head to the dumbbell rack to work small, specific muscles. But clearly, you can't go as heavy on a dumbbell curl as you can with a barbell bent over row. Over time, it's easy to start thinking that dumbbells just don't build as much muscle as the heavy barbell. But this couldn't be further from the truth, especially when you use the moves that I'm about to show you in the concept of progression. It's just like adding small plates to the barbell to get a little stronger each week we need to seek progression with our dumbbells as well. And there are more ways to do that than just picking up the next heavier set of dumbbells on the rack. In fact, this might be one of the biggest reasons people can't get past their frustrating plateaus. When you start lifting, anything seems to work, but soon your newbie gains are over. So here are four areas that you need to be focused on improving in order to ensure that you're making progress with your training. More importantly, these are the indicators as to whether your training program is actually effective. Number one, more reps. Are you able to add one to two more reps every couple weeks at the same exact weight as before? Number two, more sets. Can you add another set every two to four weeks to the same exercise? Number three, more intensity. Every time a training session comes back around week after week, can you go up in weight just a little bit? Or can you decrease rest times between each sets to upgrade the intensity? And number four, better technique. This is something I focus on every single week, every single session. Are you feeling like the weights are moving better? So how do you apply these? Well, for periods of four to 16 weeks, you wanna keep your training fairly consistent and try to simply make small incremental improvements in one or two of these areas every single week. That's progressive overload in a nutshell, and it works beautifully with dumbbell exercises as well. Eventually, you may become advanced enough that you will need some barbells or even machines to help you safely overload certain exercises. But honestly, until you can start slinging around 160 pound dumbbells for reps like good old Ronnie Coleman did back in the day, then you've got plenty of room to build without ever touching a barbell. These seven dumbbell exercises that I'm gonna show you are going to build great overall strength and muscle mass using progressive overload. Each of these exercises recruits a significant amount of muscle on its own, making each one highly intense. With small adjustments to each exercise that I'm gonna show you today, you can also pivot the movement when you reach a progression plateau and then keep going. Now, wait a minute, what does pivot a movement mean? Let's say you're a perfect program follower and you've been following a progressive overload cycle for a couple months like clockwork. Now, after a couple months, it doesn't matter how much effort you bring, how perfect your diet is, how dialed in your lifestyle and sleep are, you just stop seeing those gains week after week. What this screams to me is that it might be time for you to deload and do a back off week. This is when you're gonna let the body reset, rest, before you start back up another progressive cycle. Now here is where it's really beneficial to make slight tweaks to the training exercises. This way, on the next training build that you begin, 
you're gonna change the stimulus of that exercise ever so slightly. This is gonna make sure that your next progression cycle can last actually longer. If you were to jump right back into the same exact movement as the previous training cycle, you will likely ramp up your intensity too fast and hit that stall point yet again. So here we go. My top seven dumbbell exercises that I would use for building strength and mass. Here's how I would put them together in a full body workout and how to pivot them to keep going when you hit a plateau. We're gonna get things started with four sets of dumbbell rear foot elevated split squats. Each leg is gonna get four sets. You're gonna do eight to 10 reps per leg. And for this, I don't want you worrying about tempo. Rest about 60 to 90 seconds between legs. These are going to be tough. For variations on this exercise, you can try the deficit dumbbell rear foot elevated split squat, or you can try the front foot elevated split squat, both of which are gonna add that slight variation when you reach a plateau. Okay, next up, we're moving into a superset. So instead of doing straight sets across, we're gonna back and forth jump between two exercises for the upper body. The first is the dumbbell row. And on this one, we're gonna use tempo. We're gonna go slow down to the ground in two seconds and then fast up to the top. You're shooting for 10 to 12 reps per arm. Your second exercise is the dumbbell bench press. We're also using tempo here. This one is three seconds down, up fast. You're hitting 10 to 12 reps per set. Now on a superset, you do take rest between your exercises. So take about 60 seconds between each exercise and make sure you finish three sets of each. A couple variations on the dumbbell row. You could try the banded dumbbell row or you could switch your stance and use a tripod dumbbell row as well. For the dumbbell bench press, I like the one and a quarter dumbbell bench press as a variation where you add in that quarter rep at the bottom of the range of motion or slightly incline the bench and do an incline dumbbell bench press. Now that we've finished our upper body superset, we're moving on to the second lower body exercise. For this one, we're doing three straight sets across, dumbbell Romanian deadlifts. This one, we're going down super slow with tempo three seconds to the floor and fast back up. One key technique point on this, keep the dumbbells in front of your body. This is going to keep constant tension throughout the range, even when you're at the top. We're doing eight to 10 reps per set, and we're taking 90 seconds to two minutes rest between each effort. A variation on the dumbbell Romanian deadlift would be a deficit dumbbell Romanian deadlift where you stand up a little bit on a step, or you could do a split stance RDL, and now you're gonna have to train each leg equally reps on right, reps on left, taking rest in between both. All right, we're getting through the meat of the workout and now we're on to the final superset for the upper body. And this is only going to be two of each exercise. We're starting with a bent arm dumbbell pullover. This one's three seconds down like before in some of the other exercises, up fast. 10 to 12 reps before moving on to the second exercise in this superset, which is a dumbbell push press. For the dumbbell push press, yes, you're using some leg drive. So when the dumbbells are at the top, we're gonna slowly lower them back down to the shoulder to get some eccentric overload on the shoulders. Similar to the last superset, take about a 60 second rest in between each exercise until you've completed two of each. Now the variations on both of these exercises. For the dumbbell pullover, we have the straight arm dumbbell pullover variation, or we have the incline bench dumbbell pullover variation, and that one is similar to the first with a bent arm position. For the dumbbell push press, we also could do a single arm dumbbell push press or a pause push press where you pause at the bottom of your drive with the legs. That pause at the bottom of the drive is going to make it harder to press those dumbbells all the way to the top of your range of motion. We're gonna wrap up this training session with one final exercise for the lower body. We'll call this your cash out, and this is going to be a dumbbell suitcase cyclist squat. I like the cyclist squat because now we're gonna put a lot of the tension on the quadriceps. We've already hit the hamstrings and the glutes pretty heavily with the split squats and the RDLs, so now we're moving the load to the front of the leg. For the suitcase cyclist squat, you want that slant at about 20 degrees, and you're gonna do each rep with that three second down cadence. Three seconds down, up fast, and here we're aiming for 10 to 12 reps. Take two minutes between these final sets, 
perform your second one, and you're done for the day. Now, you want some variations for the cyclist squat, we could also do a dumbbell cyclist front squat where we move the dumbbells from our sides up to our shoulders. And then lastly, I love the goblet position, but we're gonna add in that quarter rep to make it a one and a quarter goblet cyclist squat. If you're interested, you can grab this workout in the description below. You can also sign up for my free email newsletter for even more training education, workouts, and nutrition so that you can look good and move well. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for your attention. If you got ideas on more things that you would like to see from us, drop them in the comments below. We'll see you next time.